Welcome to this release of Design Fusion's Solid Edge blog. This is part three of a four-part series introducing you to the top new enhancements in Solid Edge 2025 mechanical design. In part one and two of this blog series, we looked at the new enhancements that are highlighted on this slide. So if you missed part one or part two, you may want to view them first. In this blog, you will be introduced to the topics highlighted in green. Although these may appear to be simple enhancements, they can be extremely useful and time-saving. If you recall from part two of this blog series, we discussed the new etching capabilities. In the process to improve etching, Solid Edge has also improved the wrap sketch command. As a result, the wrap sketch is far more accurate and it improves resulting curves connectivity across face edges. It guarantees that curves lay on parent surfaces so they work as input for normal features. Wrapping around closed loop faces has also been improved. Let's have a quick look at this in Solid Edge 2025. In this demo part, I'll turn on the sketch that I wish to wrap. Notice that the sketch is on a plane that is tangent to the front face of the model. I'll select the surfacing tab and using the drop down next to the project command, I'll select the wrap sketch command. I'll first choose the chain option from the selection filter and then click on the outer surface of the model to select my surfaces. I then right mouse button click or press the green check mark to accept this selection. Next, I'll choose the Select Entire Sketch option from the Selection filter and click on the sketch. I then right mouse button click or press Enter to finish. Notice how nicely the sketch wraps around the part. Solid Edge 2025 has added separate edge and vertex selection options to the round command. This makes it easier to get the intended results when using a fence to select a set of edges or vertices. In the cases shown on this slide, a fence was placed around the half front of the part on the side view. The first image shows the results using the pre se 2025 option of edge corner. The second image shows the results using the new edge option and the third image shows the results using the new vertex option. Let's have a quick look at this in Solid Edge 2025. I'll launch the round command and choose the pre se 2025 option of edge corner for the selection type. I'll rotate the view to the right side and fence select the front face of the model. I'll rotate the model back to view the selection and enter in two millimeters for the round radius. Notice the results. I'll undo this feature and launch the round command again. This time I'll choose the new edge selection option. I'll fence select the front face of the model and rotate it back to view the results. Notice the difference from the previous feature. Let's undo this again and repeat the round command this time using the new vertex selection option. Once again, I'll window select the front face of the model and rotate it to view the results. Notice the difference using this option. Solid Edge has added the ability to filter the Pathfinder and the graphics window in the assembly environment via text search. To do this, you do the following. Step 1, toggle on the filter button in the Pathfinder. Step 2, type a search criterion into the Pathfinder search bar and hit enter. In step 3, the Pathfinder graphics window should only display results matching your search text. This filtered state persists until the user toggles off the new filter button. Let's have a quick look at this in Solid Edge 2025. 
To demonstrate this new capability, I'm going to start by searching for resistor parts in this assembly. I start by typing resistors into the assembly search bar and hit the enter key. Notice that the resistors are selected within the Pathfinder and are highlighted in green within the graphics window. I'll click on the active filter icon to hide the remaining parts and just show the resistors themselves. Clicking on the active filter icon again will show the remaining parts. To escape the command, I'll click on the small X icon to clear the text. Next, I'll try to search for capacitors. Again, these are highlighted both within the graphics window as well as the pathfinder. I'll click on the active filter icon to hide the rest of the parts and concentrate on just the capacitors. I'll click again on the active filter icon to show the remaining parts. Again, I can escape the command by clicking on the small X icon to clear the text. I'll try this one more time by searching for diodes. Notice the diodes have been selected and I can click the active filter to hide the rest of the components. I can then click on the active filter to show the rest of the components again. A very handy tool in Solid Edge 2025. Another handy tool added in Solid Edge 2025 is the ability to automatically consolidate duplicate components into groups in the assembly pathfinder. To do this, follow these steps. Step 1. Open an assembly with duplicate components and navigate to the pathfinder. Step 2. Right click on one of the duplicate components and select the new pack command. Step 3. Observe the new pack group that is automatically created with all the duplicate components stored. Along with the pack command, Solid Edge 2025 has also added an unpack command. Also worth noting is that a pack all command can also be run by right clicking on the top level of the pathfinder and selecting pack all. This will pack all duplicate components into their respective pack groups automatically. However, there is no unpack all command. You will have to unpack groups individually if you use the pack all command. Let's have a quick look at this in Solid Edge 2025. In this example, I'll continue to work with this assembly, which we've already seen has duplicate components like resistors, capacitors, and diodes. To pack these duplicate components together, I'll first start by right mouse clicking on the resistor part 1 and selecting the pack command. Notice that Solid Edge has nicely packed all the resistors together. Let's now try this for the capacitors. I select one of the capacitors and right mouse button click to select the pack command. Notice that the capacitors get consolidated accordingly. The packing of groups works not only on parts, but also on assemblies. Here I have a sub-assembly of capacitors. Again, I'll right mouse button click on any capacitors assembly and select pack. I can repeat this same process for the diodes. As you can see, all these diodes have been grouped together within the Pathfinder. Want to learn more? Please sign up to our customer portal at the website listed here, where you have access to knowledge-based articles, tips and tricks, how-to articles, and much more. And watch for part 4 of this blog series. If you need additional support, contact our support team at support at designfusion.com or call us at 1-877-215-1883.